What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And uh, just a little quick update here on the arm. This is a rambling video, a second of the week. You probably need to get used to these because this is probably a lot of what my content's going to be while I have this broken arm because it's just so difficult to script and write. Because I'll be honest with you, I have not slept in about a week. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about that split personality podcast, which a lot of you guys seem to really enjoy yesterday's episode that was very polarizing. And that, that spilled over onto Twitter, which has led to a lot of really crazy tweets and concerns and stuff. So I want to address that and talk about that a little bit. But first, let's talk about the arm. Uh, did see the doctor on Tuesday. He took a new x-ray and said with the swelling changes, he can see that it's very shattered in there. Um, and that he said specifically, I, I could do surgery, but it's not going to make a difference where you are a year from now, no matter what I do. This is going to be difficult and painful, and it's going to suck for the next year. Surgery is not going to help. I'm like, okay, that's fine. What, what kind of prognosis are we looking at here? Well, you know, he says, well, I'm going to have you back in three weeks. We'll see how it's healed. If it's healing well, then we will uh, start physical therapy. And until then, I'll give you some exercises you can do at home, which I've been doing. Um, though I've had some issues with just doing what I need to do here at home, mostly because I don't want to take the painkillers they've given me. So I, I've taken them occasionally to try to get a little bit of sleep, but I'm not sleeping because I'm in so much pain. But as you guys know, I come from a history of addiction with my family, uh, having family members who abused prescription drugs. I don't like taking prescription drugs. You guys know that with my lower back issues, I simply refused to treat it, except for over-the-counter ibuprofen and stuff like that, for three years until they finally put me on a low-end, like, tramadol script, uh, which is something I've used for the last two or three years to get me back up and moving and, and everything else, um, which is still far more dangerous of a, an opiate than I would ever want to take. So when they're like, do you want the good stuff? I'm like, no. I mean, I'll take the script and I'll use it if I absolutely have to. And I've used it a little bit, but I got to say, I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't like the way, and it doesn't really help with the pain. Even on the nights that I just broke down, I'm like, you know, I'm going to do exactly what they told me to do and take it exactly the way I'm supposed to take it. I'm not sleeping any better. It, it, something about, I, I can only sleep in one position um, because of the arm the way it is. And then that one position, my body always just gets achy and si tired and sore. And then since this, you know, arm is bound by this sling, um, it just, it cramps after a little while, after like being relaxed in the same position for a little while. So then I got to get up and do the physical therapy exercises, which is starting to actually create a little bit of relief. That's what I've learned about physical therapy. When they give you these exercises, there's a good reason. They will make you feel better, not worse. They'll hurt temporarily, but they will make you feel better. So when he gave me some exercises to do, I was all over it. it sucks for the next couple of hours. But after that, you know, a day later, things are getting a little bit better. But now that we're about one week way out from the break, we get about two and a half more weeks of, of decent healing to go. We'll go back to the doctor and get a follow-up. Um, it is affecting my sleep. It is affecting my mood. It's affecting my everything. Um, you know, but I think a lot of people here have been very concerned. This, this will be the setback that pushes Boogie back. It's going to put on all the weight again. I'm nauseous all the time. I don't even really want to eat very much. And I'm, I'm eating fruit and I'm eating lean meats. I'm eating the same stuff I would normally eat, just not as often. Uh, I'll probably lose weight during this. Um, people are like, well, you're going to stop losing weight at the very least. Well, I mean, I kind of did stop losing weight in the last six months anyway. In the last six months, I only lost like, what, 20, 25 pounds, something like that. Um, so I've definitely slowed down and plateaued. I'm probably always going to be 300 pounds or, you know, I think that's the lowest I'll get is about 300 pounds. Um, and, and yeah, so I, I, yeah, I guess that's a real concern to have, but you got to keep in mind in, in this, in my mind, this is the healthiest I've ever been. This is the healthiest I've been since like eighth grade. Uh, and that's including the broken arm. <laughs> I broke my arm in eighth grade, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, playing football, playing junior varsity. It shattered two fingers and, and the wrist in two places. So um, anyway, long story short, uh, I, I'm very happy with my progress. I'm very happy with my satisfaction. Or I'm very satisfied with my progress, very satisfied with where I'm at. But I really am so motivated to keep moving forward. I don't know why people would think seeing how easily injured I was here would make me want to get fat again. Or to see how unhealthy or how difficult this is because of the injury, why that would make me want to get fat again. It, it actually does the opposite. It makes me want to try all that much harder to continue down the right path to have a better quality of life so that I don't trip and break an arm when I do. That's, I don't know. I, I, under, I love the concern. I appreciate the concern, especially those who are genuinely concerned. A lot of people like use the guise of concern to like be overly critical, stuff like that, I feel like sometimes. But for those of you who do genuinely care, I want you guys not to worry. 
Uh, which leads me to the, the whole Francis thing what I wanted to make this video about today. Um, so I, I let Francis take over Twitter after this split personality podcast. The problem is only about 50,000 people listen to that podcast. You probably have not listened to it. If you haven't, listen to all four episodes. I think they're really funny. I think it's the most creative thing I've done for a while. It's very polarizing, though. And in the, the last episode there, Francis won, so I let Francis take over Twitter for a little while. I made some off-color jokes and some s stupid Francis-style humor, um, and m the mass majority of people enjoyed it and thought it was funny and, and, and commented and played along. I used some of my you know, cr uh, creator friends who I know and make jokes at their expense, and, and, and Ricky, you know, Bur Ricky Berwick and Ela Klein and Zombie Unicorn and these people, even going as far as to ask some of these people ahead of time, hey, you mind if I make a joke? I'm doing this thing. Um, and it's worked out pretty good. But a few people have, have thought, Boogie, you've gone crazy, right? Like that's, do you actually have split personalities? And I think some of those people are being facetious. I think they're being purposely obtuse. But for those of you who, who, who don't understand, it's all just an act. It's all just fun. Uh, I learned a lot of this from, you know, one of my fellow creators who's, who I've collabed with many times. If you've seen the videos where I beat somebody up with a baseball bat or seen the videos where I climbed up, had somebody trapped in my attic, it's the same thing. It's the, it's the same goofy stuff. It's just having some fun with it. So I don't want you guys to actually worry uh, I, somebody actually said that I needed to be committed, that someone should forcibly commit me, <laughs> which is, I know it's just the internet being the internet, but trust me guys, if you, you know me well enough, I share everything in my life. Um, if I was going crazy, I'd be the first one to tell you, I'd be like, Hey guys, I'm going crazy. Uh, give me lots of clicks and views, I guess for that. I, cause that's what I do. Um, uh, but I'm, to be honest with you, the time you needed to be worried about me, I think the most was eight months ago when I just got out of that surgery and then I just started the divorce and everything was going completely insane. Now, I'm not going to lie. These last couple of months, broken arm included, has been very, very difficult. The whole backlash on the internet for my stupid stuff that I've said or some of the stupid jokes I made, the extreme scrutiny I've been in in the last couple of months, how I've got these this group of people who just like follow me every day and they, they uh, just scrutinize every little thing I do. Um, and then they're very vocal and they get in your face about it and they try to make sure you're seeing it. And they, they, I don't know, it's a weird hobby to have, but that's their hobby. And I respect that. I understand that it's just a bizarre, bizarre hobby to have. There's a lot of YouTube creators. I don't like, I just don't watch them. I'm not like, that concerned about it, but that's, that's, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to judge anybody. I don't even want to judge the people who are judging me. It's their life, their choices. That's their hobby. That's what they want to do. Um, it, but it does carry a certain amount of psychological weight. Um, it is difficult to deal with sometimes. And I've talked to every creator from the top to the bottom about it. Um, you know, I'm reading a book, uh, by my friend Hank Green, who, who wrote a book and, and mentions this kind of culture and this kind of stuff. Uh, several times throughout the book. So it's an interesting world that we're living in. It's an interesting place that we're living in. And it's difficult. And I certainly am going to navigate that minefield poorly all the time. I do have a kind of shitty, shocky sense of humor. And I do kind of have a, um, uh, you know, just a kind of, I don't know, dour, nihilistic outlook on life. And that stuff comes through every once in a while. And people, people take great offense at it, um, which is fine. You don't have to like me. You know, I like me. There's about 100,000 people who watch this video who seem to like me, so that'll be fine. Uh, you know, there's plenty enough people out there who like me, and I will often say that from time to time. But for those of you who are concerned that I need to be committed, that I'm going crazy, that I've lost my mind, that was true about nine months ago. <laughs> and I've dipped about halfway back to there um, in the last month or so. Um, and breaking my arm didn't help. But... Breaking my arm did put things in perspective. How silly it is to be concerned about people on message boards, Twitter, who don't like you, um, who, who never really know you, who never really know your actual message, people who are purposely obtuse, people who purposely pretend that you are different than you actually are or that you said something different than you actually mean, people who try to create, I don't know, I don't know why that's the world we live in anymore, but it is. And I'm just kind of getting used to it. And putting my breaking my arm just made me realize I need to focus more on self-care. Not less. For those of you who are worried that he's going to put on 100 pounds because he broke his arm. 
Not less, but more. More self-care. That's my goal right now. So, I hope you enjoyed this rambling video. I'm going to go take care of myself. I'm going to try to get a little bit of sleep. I'm going to sleep in like an hour at a time. The, just the pain is so difficult to deal with right now. But we're one week in. It's gotten a little bit better. Next week, it'll be even better. Next week, it'll be even better. And then six weeks from now, it'll be mostly healed. And I can start physical therapy and relearn how to use the arm. So, uh, doctor says, after about a year... Uh, I should be out of pain, but hopefully I'll be out of pain long before then because I am so tired of pain. But then again, we've been friends for a long time, so I guess I guess it's it's kind of nice to sit with my old friend and, uh, and then bitch about it on the internet. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much. I'll speak with you again soon. I need sleep.